دقيقة واحد Okay, I'm ready. يلا. Praise the Lord and welcome to Jisrlan Masi. That is to say, Bridges to Christ with Pastor Joseph right here on the Trinity Channel, www.trinitychannel.com, here at ABN. Praise God. I pray you're doing well today. Uh, we're continuing our episodes, continuing our series here in Bridges to Christ, looking at different verses, many, 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 a plethora, if you will, of verses, points of departure. When you look and read the Quran, God help you if you do, uh, and uh, make you think these verses about the truth. And the truth is found nowhere, nowhere else but in the Bible, the Old and New Testament. The truth is not just found there, but it is found in someone, Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Let's look at a couple of verses in the Quran today. Uh, surah 2, uh, I'm sorry, Surah, surah 4, Surah Al-Nisa, Surah 4, uh, verse 47 and 48. Uh, the topic today is the unforgivable sin. What is the unforgivable sin? Well, that's a question for Christians, but it's a question in Islam as well. Let's take a look at Surah 448. We'll also look at 47 and some surahs in Surah Al-Baqarah, the ch second chapter of the Quran as well. Let's look now at Surah 448. Allah forgiveth not that partners should be set up with him. But he forgiveth anything else to whom he pleaseth. To set up partners with Allah is to devise a sin most heinous indeed. So we find in this verse that if you um, are a mushrik, if you set up anything as a partner with Allah, then Allah cannot forgive your sin. Now we find in other verses in the Quran where it seems to say that he can even forgive that sin. So here we have another contradiction. But what I want to look at today is not only is this verse talking about the unforgivable sin being that of setting up partners with Allah, but if you look again at the previous verse, a verse that we looked at in our previous episode, Surah 4, Surah Al-Nisa, verse 47, it says, O ye people of the book, believe now, believe in what we have revealed, confirming what was already with you. Before we change the face and fame of some of you beyond all recognition and turn them hindwards or curse them as we cursed the Sabbath breakers for the decision of Allah must be carried out. And uh, what's it talking about? Believe in the Quran. Well, the Quran, according to the Quran here, confirms the Bible. Why don't you believe? Well, then it says, and if you don't do it, we're going to curse you. We're going to curse you with a curse like we cursed some Jews who broke the Sabbath. Well, this is a reference, and it, it even is borne out with uh, Yusuf Ali's note, uh, note number 568, back to Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran, Surah 2, verse 65 and 79. Let's take a look at that. Surah 2, verse 65 and 79. It, we find here a little bit of uh, illumination uh, onto the meaning of the passage at, at hand in Surah 4. Surah 2, verse 65. And well ye knew those amongst you who transgressed in the matter of the Sabbath. We said to them, Be ye apes despised and rejected. You know, <coughs> there's Muslims today, uh, of course, who hate the Jews, Arab Muslims. Whenever uh, you talk to them about the Jews, they say, Kurds wa kanazir, kanazir. <laughs> pigs and monkeys, monkeys and pigs. And, uh, and so this is where this idea comes from. In the Quran, it says that uh, God got mad at the Jews who broke the Sabbath and turned them into monkeys. Well, we don't have that in our Bible, but uh, that's what the Quran says. Of course, we don't believe that. But anyways, there's another cross-reference to one more. Let's look at that before we come back to the, the subject at hand. In Surah 2, verse 79, let's take a look at that. Then woe to those who write the book with their own hands and then say this is from Allah to traffic with it for a miserable price. 
Woe to them for what their hands do write and for the gain they make thereby. Interesting, interesting. So we see that the unforgivable sin in Islam supposedly is uh, shirk, mushrik, that uh, it says, in Allah la yaghfar, la yaghfar an yushrik bihi. So God, Allah will not forgive the uh, associating partners with himself. But we also see that there is this terrible sin in the context <coughs> of not accepting the Quran, not accepting uh, the Quran and of uh, changing supposedly the words or manufacturing the words of the holy book. Allah was so mad that he turned the Jews, it says, into monkeys. Interesting, very interesting indeed. Well, what I want us to see here is that, first and foremost, we find in the Quran, we find especially in Surah 5 of the Quran and other places, where, uh, and we've already seen in our program, how the Quran essentially accuses Jews and Christians of being mushrikeen, of associating partners with Allah. Interestingly enough, uh, the biggest uh, mushrikeen that we can find is Muhammad himself. Uh, Muhammad, who worshipped uh, a black stone, who uh, did, uh, he went around the black stone, circumambulated the black stone seven times like the pagans, even after he uh, began to preach Islam, uh, kissed the uh, black stone and uh, made his followers bow down to the black stone, which is clearly idolatry. Uh, interestingly enough, the Shahada is uh, La ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. What does it mean? There is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. In order to become a Muslim, you have to say this. So in order to become a Muslim, you couldn't just say La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. No, you have to say Allah and then his prophet is Muhammad. So in order to be a true Muslim, in order to potentially have salvation, you have to have not only Allah but Muhammad. Well, Muhammad's merely a man. So Allah is not enough to save. You have to have Muhammad. Now, a Muslim might say, well, you know, that's no different from Jesus and God. Oh, ho, 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 it's very different because in Christianity, Jesus is God. You see, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. TrinityChannel.com, there's a reason that we believe in the Trinity. The Bible does teach it. Yes, I know the Latin word Trinity is not in the Bible, but after all, the Bible wasn't written in Latin. It teaches the Trinity from cover to cover, and we can show that in our programs, Jesus or Muhammad and others. But nevertheless, that's not the subject here. The point is that we believe that God doesn't need anyone else or anything to do whatever he wants. In Islam... Allah needs Muhammad in order to save anyone. In Islam, it's very closely tied. Adding something to Allah is, a, is the worst sin. It's unforgivable. But interestingly enough, whenever it talks about this terrible sin, it also is closely associated with uh, not believing in the Quran. Well, that's interesting because in Islamic theology, the Quran is eternal, so it's uncreated. Well, I've asked many a Muslim, is the Quran Allah? No. So then in Islam, there are two eternals. Well, whatever is eternal and uncreated must be self-existent, and that is really the definition of God. So in Islam, you have more than one deity. You have Allah, and you have the Quran. And by the way, Allah is dependent upon Muhammad to save anyone. And we find that in the Quran... And in Muslims, anytime they say Muhammad, they say, uh, what do they say? They say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That doesn't mean peace and blessings be on the Prophet. That means, Sallallahu Alaihi Allah prays upon the Prophet. He prays. Well, who does Allah pray to? <laughs> does he pray to the Quran? I don't know. The Quran is the only other deity we understand in Islam. Does he pray to one of the 360 gods or goddesses in, that used to be in the, uh, in the Masjid al-Haram? Uh, when, Mo when Muhammad turned the direction of prayer there? I don't know. So here we have this unforgivable sin. But what we find is that Muhammad needs forgiveness of this sin. If you go and you look in the historical references, if you look in the Tafsir ibn Kathir, if you look at 
uh, the, uh, you look in the Sira literature, the earliest uh, Sira biographies of Muhammad, Ibn Ashah, if you look in the Hadith, you will find that it's very clearly admitted that Muhammad in Surat al-Najm, Surah 53, that Muhammad actually allowed, and, and uh, this is what's called the satanic verses. This is why Salman Rushdie has a fatwa on his head, if you will, because these verses, Muhammad says, you see Lot, Manat, and Al-Uzza, their intercession is to be hoped for. The satanic verses. Muhammad, uh, supposedly, according to Islamic uh, theology, Muhammad was duped by the devil. And so Muhammad said it's okay to pray to Lot, Manat, and Al-Uzza. Well, Muhammad is, is clearly a mushrik. How can Allah forgive Muhammad? No wonder Muhammad said he didn't know whether or not he's going to go to heaven. Oh, my goodness. Muslims, please. Muslims, please. Listen, Muslims. Why would you follow? Why would you follow a man who supposedly is the prophet of this religion who uh, he doesn't know himself whether he's going to go to heaven? As a matter of fact, according to the Quran, he probably shouldn't go to heaven because he's one of the greatest mushriks of all time. Well, what do you think? In Christianity, we find that Jesus doesn't worship anyone except God the Father. However, Jesus allows people to worship him. Isn't that amazing? Now, if he was Muhammad, we'd say that's terrible. That's idolatry. But Jesus didn't claim to just be a prophet. Jesus claimed to be much more than a prophet. Jesus claimed to be God in the flesh, and hence the reason that he received worship. He claimed to be equal with God. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He claimed that he would share God's throne. He claimed to be eternally existent. He claimed the very same name as God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. John chapter 8, verse 58, hearkening back to God the Father, Yahweh's designation of himself to Moses in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. The unforgivable sin of associating partners with Allah. Interestingly enough, that's our first commandment and our second commandment in the Wasi al-Ashra, the Ten Commandments. Remember Charlton Heston, folks? Eh? Uh, but interestingly enough, the first commandment and the second commandment that we find in Exodus, that we find in uh, Deuteronomy, these commandments, the first two True Muslims break five times every day when they bow down to a dumb, senseless, vulgar-looking black stone in a black cube in the middle of the desert of Arabia in a little town called Mecca. Don't you want to come to Jesus Christ? Is not this another bridge that should make you think of the true religion, what is true and what's not? Is this true? If Allah cannot forgive the sin of shirk, then Muhammad is in hell. Because Muhammad, according to Islam, it used to be in the Quran, Surah Al-53, Surah Al-Najm. It's not there anymore. They took it out. But you go and you study. Study Islamic scholarship. And they will tell you, oh yes, he did say these things. And the Satan made him say it. Come to Jesus Christ. This is Jusser Lil Masih, Bridges to Christ. Follow a prophet who's more than a prophet, who's the sinless and perfect son of God, who was never confused, who never had magic worked upon him, who never spoke the words of Satan, but always spoke the words of God because he is in fact God, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come on over the bridge. There's plenty of room in the kingdom of God. Love to have you here. One day we'll sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and yes, Jesus. I'm sorry Muhammad won't be there, but I hope that you will be there. Don't you want to come? This is Pastor Joseph with Jisr Lil Masih, Bridges to Christ, here on the Trinity Channel, www.trinitychannel.com. Please pray for us and uh, let others know about these broadcasts and give so that we can continue to produce these world-class Christian apologetic and evangelical programs preaching the truth of Jesus Christ, exposing the falsehood of all religions and Islam in particular right here at ABN 
www.trinitychannel.com.